You're good to go whenever you whenever they're ready. Oh, exactly. You're good whenever they're ready yeah. to go. Before you start, make sure you put it on slideshow mode. Yeah, we're down to the bottom, or it says 57. Bottom there. Yeah, down the bottom. Yeah, there you go. Left. To the left one? Left one. That one. There you go. Okay, let me know. So, um, meant to be funny, and you know it is, except it, um, I chose this because it really um, illustrates the irony of what's happening to almost a million Californians right now who have just received a bill from the state for services that look like they are enhancing their security and their safety and in reality do nothing of the sort. So since August, 800,000 Californians, um, rural homeowners, have received a bill from the state of California for a fire prevention fee, is what it's called. It's also commonly being called a fire tax. Uh, 27, almost 27,000 Sonoma County residents have gotten this bill, and um, it's mostly unanticipated by people who've gotten it. Um, it's almost across the board very poorly understood from the people that I've talked to about what it actually is. And um, of those 20, 000, uh, 27,000 people, maybe some of you have gotten the bill, but almost certainly somebody that you know has. Um, <coughs> So this, um, the fire prevention fee, which has been, um, it's been unfairly in imposed on rural California homeowners. Uh, it is actually illegal under Proposition 26. And people who receive the bill need to uh, pay it under protest and they should be reimbursed by the state. <coughs> so I'm one of the people that got the bill um, and I'm also a volunteer firefighter that can attest to how unfair and how illegal this, this fee is. Um, I'm gonna give you a little bit of background about firefighting in rural California, um, who does it and who funds it. Um, I'm gonna tell you exactly what this fee is. Um, I'll show you how it's unfairly imposed and um, how it's illegal under Proposition 26. And then I'll give you um, specific details about how to protest it. <coughs> So, um, people who got this bill live in state responsibility areas. Um, this is a CAL FIRE map, and what a state responsibility area is, is it's basically all publicly and commercially owned land that is not either federally owned or within a city limit. So, um, <coughs> it's quite, quite a bit of area. Now, in these state responsibility areas, um, communities have their own local fire departments. <clears throat> um, local fire departments get their funding from, uh, from local taxes, parcel taxes, but they also really heavily depend on um, volunteers, on fundraising, and on donations. <clears throat> So um, these are some FEMA statistics from uh, in California, and you can see here that uh, almost 60% of all fire departments in California are either mostly or entirely volunteer. <coughs> and this is nationwide. I thought this was interesting. This is from um, the U.S. Embassy that shows how much money, almost $40 million a year, in taxpayer savings from volunteer fire departments. <coughs> um, So, in my, my fire department, and this is, this is us, and it's just an example of um, volunteer firefighters, we have no paid members, we're 100% um, volunteer. And the money that we get from uh, local taxes is barely enough to cover our workman's comp insurance. Um, what we need, what it takes to run a fire department, um, we get from community donations and fundraising. Um, and, you know, I wanna really, um, emphasize that it's not, you know, running a fire department is not just about those of us who train and respond to emergencies. It really does take a village. It takes the whole community. You know, um, tons of people who don't go out and fight fires, they're, you know, they're there volunteering in other ways, they're doing fundraising, they're maintaining our equipment, 
They're reaching deep in their pockets and they're giving generously. It's a community effort. Um, I think I'm running out of time. Um, <laughs> this was this was an art department in 2008. After you know, we spent 10 days, 24/7 fighting a 2,000-acre fire, <clears throat> and we only lost one structure. But the point is, is that we would not be able to have done this without community support. We had people who brought in their bulldozers, who were feeding us food, who took over communications, um, and who replaced our burnt-up uh, our burnt up chainsaw there. Uh, oops. Okay, I'm going to just for a moment. So CAL FIRE is the state fire department, and it is funded through the state general fund, right? California state taxes, everybody pays for CAL FIRE equally, according to the state taxes. Um, and there's some <clears throat> jurisdictional um, differences between local and CAL FIRE, uh, state fire departments. Even though we work together, um, CAL FIRE is responsible for fighting all wildland fires in California um, during the fire season. And we do work mutually, but what I want to say is that structured, um, structure pr protection is always remains a local um, responsibility. So what the fire, um, fire prevention fee is, is it's sent out to, <clears throat> it's $150 on every inhabitable structure within these state responsibility areas. <clears throat> um, So it's important to understand what exactly this fee does and does not pay for. This is from the Cal Fire um, uh, website, and this says exactly what it does and does not do. It pays for Cal Fire people to come around and inspect your land and build and charge you if you do not provide a defensible space around your house, which is a property owner's responsibility to do to do that themselves. Um, you can see it. Some of these things I don't even know what they are. Fire prevention engineering, um, evacuation planning, education, severity mapping, law enforcement. You know, This is the list of things that they say that this $84 million you know, that they're collecting can pay for. What it does not pay for, and they admit this, it does not pay for not one new service. It does not pay for any firefighting activities, right? Not one firefighter, not one piece of equipment. <clears throat> So, <clears throat> this, this fee was sent out only to rural California homeowners. No businesses, no commercial properties, and nobody in, in urban areas. Um, George Renner, who is a former state legislator, and he sits on the board of uh, Equalization, who's the entity who's having to collect this money, is, he's very opposed to it. Um, he gave an analogy that I'm going to borrow, which I thought was, you know, very poignant and very apropos to this, um, saying that, you know, this fire fee is like charging people who live in high crime areas a fee to build new prisons because they live in areas that produce more criminals than people who live in safer neighborhoods do. I mean, it's just absurd. People who live in rural areas do not cause more fires than people who live in urban areas. <coughs> so. Um, how did this happen, this fire prevention fee? It was passed by a simple majority in the legislature last year. It was signed by Governor, um, Governor Brown. Um, what California state law says is that <clears throat> any new, new tax has to be passed by a two-thirds majority in the legislature. Um, so the way they've gotten around this is by calling it a fee not a tax. And you see this a lot in politics today. The other reason is that you know a fee just seems more palatable than a tax. But there are some very, very clear differences between what a fee and a tax is. Um, these come from, it's a compilation. I got this from um, Orange County Taxpayers Association, greatergreaterwashington.org, and uh, <clears throat> taxlaws.org. So a fee basically is defined by these things. They pay for something specific. They are not mandatory payment. Um, whoever's paying it gets the benefit of what they're paying for. And um, they can choose to either engage in the activity or not. As opposed to 
goes to tax, which is collected to raise general revenue. The general public gets the benefit of it, and payment is mandatory. So looking at what this the fire prevention fee is, it is clear that this is a tax. You know, no, the people who are having to pay this money are not getting direct benefit, which then makes it absolutely illegal under Proposition 26. Um, Howard Jarvis Taxpayers Association is mounting um, a lawsuit against the state of California. But in order to do this, um, people have to pay the tax under protest. You have to pay it first, protest it, and then they can start the, um, the lawsuit. So I am going to be giving you all information. Hopefully you can pass it along to anyone that you know who lives in a rural area so that they know exactly how to do this. Um, and in conclusion, I want to say, you know, this is, um, it's illegal, it's unjust, and in this time, you know, our economic time when everything is so stressed, I know that the state of California is, but they cannot be doing this. Um, and if we let them get away with it, who knows what they'll do next. Thank you.